moment just to open in prayer if we could please our loving happy father we thank you for we have this privilege lord that we're able to draw inside this hall with heat and light and uh, in fellowship lord and to come before you just as we bring um, the needs and the, the concerns upon our heart in prayer both as uh, our individuals lord as families and as a church so we just <laughs> come before you and ask for your 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 hearing ear, Lord, as we know you will. And just as I open your word, Lord, just uh, just a few simple thoughts, Lord, just that uh, my voice will disappear and, and the words of Scripture will come through, Lord. And we ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. Um, if you're online, it's good to see everyone who's come along tonight here on online. And a couple of we... Um, Passages, just, and, and, and I'm, I'm not going to read them just for the sake of time, just I'm going to go through them, and you can certainly can look them up, and you can look at them at any other stage um, when you have this word home. And it's in Ezra, if you want to look, and it's in Ezra chapter 7. Sorry, I just get my notes here, because that is critical. Ezra chapter 7. And I was thinking about, um, we're into a new year, 12 days gone already just unless you didn't notice and do you know what it, it flies in but just think you know what happens in in the new year and, and it's already been mentioned in past evenings just you know what people intend to do what people um kind of like say they'll do and and everything else but i'm going to start with this guy uh, ezra all right and he's uh, in chapter seven and uh, verse nine and this date given, certainly not for January the 1st, it's actually 27th of March uh, is the date. He, uh, upon the first day of the first month, so that's the 27th of March in their calendar, which was my birthday, so it's very uh, important. Uh, for upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon, and on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem, according to the good hand of his God upon him. And this is the first bit is vital, but this we second. But for God, for Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it, and to teach in Israel statutes and judgment. So, uh, two things I would take from that uh, it was that um, he was getting out of Babylon. He was going up, out of. Uh, so he's making a, an effort, and we know what Babylon speaks of the world and he was heading up out and he was heading to Jerusalem uh, which is a positive thing but um, the second part of that uh, verse 10 um, and it was an individual uh, and you think as you get into a new year um, what difference will this new year make for individuals and uh, for, for a fellowship and for a witness and I thought to myself you know, what big difference um, would that make? And you know where Ezra started? Uh, prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord. <coughs> he started with, uh, let's say, I, I have a wee title on this revival, um, whether you want to call it New Year revival or whatever. Um, Ezra started here, as we all need to do. That's where revival start. It doesn't start you looking at somebody else and trying to encourage somebody else to be revived um, to do God's work Ezra started here in his own heart and prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and prepared his heart but he also um, and to do it which is a big step uh, you can all have great intentions um, you can all um, make a promises within your mind uh, and you can make promises what I'm going to do in the new year. Uh, but here's this guy, Ezra, um, in intended to head to, ba uh, to Jerusalem from Babylon. So he was going the right direction. He had prepared his heart um, to seek the law of the Lord and to do it. And that, that we second part there is the critical bit. He was prepared to do it. So if you would turn to me, just uh, turn just again, just um, over to Nehemiah. <clears throat> could on uh, Nehemiah 8 and I, I, as I say I'm not going to read I'm just going to read bits out of this here because just for the sake of time just and 
And here, here, here we have, um, and all the people gathered themselves together, at verse 1, as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book. Um, now, Ezra had prepared his heart, and to do the things that God had led upon it, you know, to do these things. But it just wondered, and, and it's five months, actually, when you come from this date, that when he left um, Babylon to, to, into Jerusalem, you're roughly five months, there it is. And here's the people asking Ezra to, it wasn't Ezra saying to the people, we don't know what was said before, but, but the people's actually uh, asking Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And from that there, I'm just wondering, was God preparing the hearts of the people? Um, was that a difference? Because they told Ezra, he headed that direction, to do the will of God. And here's the people saying to him, um, bring the book. So what came from that? And as, as I say, um, and he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from morning until midday before the men and the women and those who could understand this verse 3 and all and the ears of all the people were attentive so the people had asked him to bring the book he in his heart was ready before God um, but the people were attentive why were they attentive? because they asked him to bring the book they were, they were, they were wanting to listen to what was to be said. And verse 5, And Ezra opened the book of the sight of all the people, for he was above the people, and that's the first mention within scriptures of a pulpit. So, you know, just in that text there when you read. And he opened it, and all the people stood up. So they were moving into action here. So when he opened the book, they all stood up. They asked him to bring it. He opened the book, started to read to him, and they all stood up. And the first thing Ezra does is, And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen. While lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord. So they answered, Amen. So they agree in what Ezra has said. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord. So, so you see the, the pattern of where this is going. Ezra's heart, he was going and intended to do this. He gets to Jerusalem. The people asked him, you know, bring the book. And the book is the law of God. And he opens it, and they're attentive. They stood up, and now they have, and they worship the Lord. This is moving in a right direction. And then it goes on to say, um, and, then, and, and the day is holy unto the Lord your God, uh, verse 9. Uh, Mourn not weep, for all the people wept when they had heard the words of the Lord. And what they're really weeping over is they realised their sin. What they were doing, how the book spoke to them, the word of God spoke to them, um, and they realised their sin. And it goes back to what Ezra says, you know, reading the word, but doing it is, a, is an effective way. And it, and it goes on to say about that, uh, and uh, neither be ye sorry, verse 10, he said, and go your way, eat fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them whom nothing is prepared. For the day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. There's that. So the people wept, and here we have, and verse 12, the people went their way, and in verse um, 17, it says, and not the children of really done so, and there was a great gladness. So do you see how the product of Ezra starting off out of Babylon into Jerusalem, doing the word of the Lord, people actually listening to what was said, the effect it had in their life. And folks, we're no different. See this book here? God's word is sharper than any two-edged sword, and, and, and we know that. Um, and, and you can read all this, and you can note off by heart, and you could recite it. But if you don't do it, it's ineffective. That's, and that's, as we go into this year, I was just thinking, you know, um, where does revival start? And, and it was said often before, you know, when you look out in that, um, that poor world out there, um, 
It needs revival. It needs the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other way about it. You only have to listen to your news. Um, um, it's sad. And people are lost. And only for the people, you know, to have that eagerness to hear what God has said. And here we have the very words of God here in front of us. Words whereby ye may be saved. You know, that, this is it. On how we live. Um, it's amazing. And, and it, it kind of spoke to me thinking, you know, um, and when you go down through Nehemiah, that we, um, when you think about scripture and you think about your conviction as a sinner and, and, and God's salvation. Um, funny, I was reading through the and I had this uh, underlined in my Bible for, for something else and, and I just came across it again. And not that far away, uh, when you think of that in Nehemiah chapter 9 and um, verse 17, uh, in the very latter part, but thou art a God ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness. And spoke us them not. Yeah, that's the God we know, and that's the God we, as our Savior. That's the God who is our God. And as I say, I started off. You know, we we're into this year, twelve days already, and what you make and what you promise. But I, I had another just a wee, just a wee thing written here. What if I said to you, um, and this is in, I'll, I'll not turn to it for the sake of time. That last new year there, the first, was the last one. For you, or for, for, for what was, if that was the last new year you had? Because, you know, as believers, there is going to be a last New Year's Day. There is. You know, God came to paradise as a visitor and walked in the garden with Adam and Eve. You know, it walked in the cool of the day. The next time he's coming, he's coming to dwell. And you think to yourself, someday there will be no New Year's Day because it'll be eternity. It'll be forever. And just as we, you know, on Sunday morning around this table, you know, with the emblems, think about, you know, this do until I come. And we're just passed into a new year. Maybe sooner than we think. Individually, or maybe sooner than we think, as as a, as a collective church, as God's church, um, there might not be another new year. And I was thinking, as you think about revival, yeah, and what you do, um, what difference can you make in this new year? What difference can you make in this next twelve months? Uh, whether that be individually, whether that be as a church, um, whether that be just will witness a conversation uh, and I just I was thinking you know <coughs> what difference can I make in this year and it's a it's a bit of a lesson as we get into the new year it's a bit of a wake-up call sometimes you know when you think you know uh, I think I even said you know I mean what has passed is passed but could we do something different or, or uh, are we stuck there <laughs> or uh, you know how do you progress the gospel the gospel has never changed Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. It's never changed. Never will. Um, but to be here, and there was a wee poem, funny, I had it for ages and found it and just was thinking, you know, this year it's called, uh, just as we finish, and as I say, but before we um, close in prayer, just and then sing. This year, Lord Jesus, for this coming year, just one request I bring. I do not pray for happiness or any earthly thing. I do not pray to understand the way thou leadest me, but this I ask, teach me to do the thing that pleaseth thee. I want to know thy guiding voice, to walk with thee each day. Blessed Saviour, make me swift to hear and ready to obey. And thus the year I now begin, a happy year will be, if I am seeking just to do the thing that pleaseth thee. And should that be our focus for this year, folks? A um, few thoughts. Um, just as we just close in prayer, just uh, and again, we just um, bring the very words of God before uh, everyone. Again, just, just let us pray for a moment. Our loving Heavenly Father, just a few 
stumbling thoughts, Lord, but yet read from your very scriptures, Lord, and, and your words will never diminish or never pass away. So, Lord, we just ask that the, these words, Lord, uh, may stir people's hearts, Lord, may stir our own hearts, Lord, and to a realization, Lord, uh, the, the clock is ticking down, Lord, and we are so blessed to know you as Saviour, but yet there's so many people out there don't know that. So, Lord, just let us, as we get into this year, just have that focus, Lord, just to spread the gospel, to tell about the love of God, and, Lord, and his, and his need to save sinners. Lord. Just hear these words, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.